Today is Mock Draft Monday. Every Monday leading up all the way till the NFL Draft, I will be doing a full seven-round mock draft for the San Francisco 49ers. I will be using, like the last time, the Draft Network's Mock Draft Simulator. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Without further ado, let's hit it. Welcome back to my second mock draft using the Draft Network's Mock Draft Simulator. If you guys haven't checked it out, I definitely encourage you to. It's so much fun to use. There's so much fun to play around with. Um, the website itself is a fantastic website. They have so many different articles. They have mock drafts. They have big boards. They have everything that you could want for all of the draft nerds much like myself. So a couple of things before we start this off. Um, kind of like what I said the last mock draft that I did is I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo gets traded before or during the draft. If he does, it's probably to the Carolina Panthers, maybe the Houston Texans for a future pick. Carolina, they really don't have that many mid-round picks this year, so I could foresee it being a 2023 third round pick that could bump up to a second should the Panthers make the playoffs, but that's about it. Um, the move, though, that I would make prior to the draft is actually bringing back Joukowsky Tart at safety. Now, look, of course, he had that big blunder in the NFC Championship game against the Rams. But overall, I think he's a very, very solid safety. Knows where to be. Knows the scheme. Is familiar with all the guys in the secondary. So I think on a one-year deal for near vet minimum, it would be wise to bring back Tart. That way, we don't have to force picking a safety early and drafting for need as opposed to best player available. You know, with the 49ers, look, we were a matter of plays away from making the Super Bowl and potentially winning it. So I don't think we were a team that should be drafting for need. I think, look, bring in best player available, bring in guys who are going to help us take the next step, and we'll go from there. So without further ado, let's get into the start of the draft. Now, to me, there's a lot of different options that the 49ers can go with. Of course, we don't have a first round pick. We gave that up to Trey for to the Dolphins to get Trey Lance, and we won't have a first round pick next year. Um, although it's a lot of draft capital that we gave up, without getting too far into that, I think Trey Lance is going to be really, really good. I do also think that Jimmy Garoppolo will not be on the roster come Week One for the 2022 season whoever we're playing. I think he will get traded or cut, and that will allow us to extend Debo, extend Bosa, things of that nature. So let's take a look. So now it's our pick, second round, 61 overall, and we have some very interesting options that stand out immediately. So the first guy that stands out is actually DeMarvin Leal, um, the interior lineman for Texas A&M. Now, of course, the 49ers lost DJ Jones to the Denver Broncos in the offseason. So you might think, hey, let's you know take DeMarvin here. That could be a natural, just replace DJ Jones with DeMarvin. However, I actually think an interior defensive line, we're pretty solid. We have Javon Kinlaw, who's looking incredibly healthy, knock on wood. We also have a lot of other players that we brought back. Maurice Hurst, we have Kevin Givens. It looks like Eric Armstead is going to be firmly entrenched in the inside of the uh, interior defensive line. We also brought in Hassan Ridgeway, who you know, previously played with the Eagles and the Colts. So I don't think it's an absolute need right now. Uh, on here on the Draft Network, they're showing interior offensive linemen as a need. I don't totally disagree. Cornerback, I think it's somewhat of a need. Um, I would actually bump safety up. I think safety is probably the biggest need that we have at this point, even if we brought back a Jaquaski tart. But at this point here, I want to bring in someone who I think is overall the best player. And it's really, really tempting to take DeMarvin here. But when I see the name Trey McBride, I think Trey McBride can be George Kittle, could be George Kittle Part 2, maybe even more so. The thing about Trey McBride is that he can play a number of different positions. You've seen him at Colorado State line up in the backfield, in motion, at the, the classic tight end position. And I think he would just be another weapon 
for Trey Lance to have. So I'm going to take Trey McBride at tight end in the second round. Now look, of course tight end isn't our biggest need. It's probably far from it, considering we have arguably the best tight end in football. But it actually give, takes a lot of weight off George Kittle's shoulders. Now here's the thing. By taking a Trey McBride there, it allows Kittle, maybe he gets to be more of a receiver. You know, maybe there's less attention put on George Kittle when you have McBride, you have Debo, you have Ayuk. So I think that could unleash arguably our best player in George Kittle and free him up to do a lot of other things. Now at this point, we're in the very late third round, 93 overall. Let's not forget that we actually have a pick 12 picks later from a compensatory pick for Mike McDaniel being hired by the Miami Dolphins. So here it gets real interesting. Now, what I'm going to do here is that I actually do think that we could really shore up the interior offensive line. And I think Cole Strange is a perfect guy to do that with. So here's the thing. Alex Mack is coming back for one more year, it sounds like. Um, So maybe Cole Strange can learn the ropes from Alex Mack. We have Aaron Banks, who recently... Kyle Shanahan actually said that, you know, Aaron Banks could have played middle to the end of last year, but the Niners, we got on the roll, we were winning a bunch of games, and he didn't want to mess with the chemistry, and with the offensive line, chemistry is such a big thing. But I think taking a Cole Strange right here is a perfect fit for terms of need, in terms of best player available. He's really, really solid, and I think he could ultimately be the, you know, the successor to an Alex Mack, or maybe, you know, move him to left guard, maybe Aaron Banks is the long-term answer at right guard, and Daniel Brunskill, rightfully so, is the number six offensive lineman. That's where I think Brunskill's biggest value is. As the number six offensive lineman, if someone gets hurt, he just slots right in. He can play almost every position on the offensive line. Now we're at pick 105, and this is a pick that if anyone has watched my channel recently or over the last few months at least, you know probably where I'm going with this. Um, I have a favorite player at this position, and I think cornerback is still a need. We saw last year in 2021 how important it is to have you know incredible depth at the cornerback position. You know, we we had to trot out an old Josh Norman, Drake Kirkpatrick, and those guys were just getting toasted in almost every play, or else giving up defensive pass interference penalties or getting run over. Um, so I'm going to go Martin Emerson. I think Emerson is just such a great fit for this defense. Now, I know you guys, and I've seen it in the comments and other videos, you have preferences at cornerback. Um, I've heard uh, Kobe Bryant, for example. But to me, I think Emerson has that great blend of physicality and aggressiveness. Now, You know, of course, I think he could do with some development. And I think because we have Charvarius Ward, we have Ambry Thomas, we have Emmanuel Mosley, Emerson won't shouldn't at least be forced into playing that early in his career. So I believe with some coaching, you know, getting refining his technique a little bit. Combine that with his aggressiveness, with his physical uh, play, you know, and his ability to tackle. I think that's just a great move for the 49ers to go there. And I just really love the value right there. So now we're actually in the fourth round, pick 134 overall. Rashad White, you know, from Arizona State, he has Kyle Shanahan running back written all over him. But I do think it's a little bit early to go with a running back. At this point, I don't know if I would go running back. Ideally, if there was an edge rusher, but really, the next guy at edge is going to be Alex Wright. I'd love to have a speed edge rusher, maybe like earlier, maybe a Sam Williams or someone to that effect, but he wasn't available at the time. So we have to adjust, and this is what Guys like, you know, John Lynch and company will have to do come draft day. So when it comes to the fourth round, pick 134 overall, look, we've addressed cornerback. We've addressed the interior offensive line. We brought in a great weapon for Trey Lance at tight end. So what they're showing here is wide receiver, edge, safety. But at the end of the day, for me, the biggest thing is I think you just have to go with the most talented player available or who you believe that to be and although it's probably early I'm gonna go Rashad White here I think he's just a perfect fit this is the fourth round we're not talking like a second round pick for a running back I love Elijah Mitchell 
A Mitchell, you know, Elijah Mitchell plays very physical. I wouldn't be surprised if he misses games. Rashad White is the kind of guy who could just come in and right from, you know, the get-go could just be an absolute force at running back. You know, we lost, you know, it's one of those things that's a bummer, but we lost Raheem Mostert. But I think if you have a running back group of uh, Elijah Mitchell, Rashad White, Trey Sermon, Jeff Wilson, Jamichael Hasty. That's five running backs who can play in this offense. That's a position that we shouldn't have to worry about for years now. And just watch Rashad White's highlights because you'll see what I'm talking about. He's got Shanahan written all over him. Now, to me, ideally here, I would, I mean, and I think in the fifth round, pick 172, Pierre Strong Jr., I really like him at this spot. But at this point, I would happily take Verone McKinley at safety. Now, McKinley, and I've seen you guys comment about McKinley. You know, he takes gambles. He takes risks. But in the fifth round, someone who takes risks and maybe, you know, more calculated risks is absolutely worth it. Um, You know, like I'd mentioned before we got into the start of the mock draft is that I would bring back Joukowsky Tart. Now we have McKinley who plays much more aggressively a little bit like Martin Emerson. And I think that in the secondary, maybe that's something that this secondary needs is to play a little bit more aggressive, play a little bit more physical, take some gambles, you know, but the biggest thing is taking those calculated gambles. And I think, you know, you give McKinley some time to learn the scheme and everything like that. I think he could end up being a really good safety. I believe in the last mock draft, I had drafted him in the fourth round, getting him here in the fifth round, I think is excellent value. And you look at it, and I believe he could be a Deshaun Goldson-esque type player for the 49ers. Now, here we are in the sixth round, pick 187 overall. Man, I mean, if I hadn't drafted Rashad White, I mean, Pierre Strong Jr. here would be just a home run hit. And I'm. it's one of those things where... You know, I don't necessarily like to draft for need or whatnot. I like to draft the best player available. And Pierre Strong at this point probably is. But we just really don't need a running back. So I'm actually going to go with Kalen Barnes here. You know, he shares a similar sounding name to my name. But um, it's one of those things with Baylor at cornerback. He's actually uh, one of the fastest cornerbacks, if not the fastest, in the draft. So maybe some return potential there. But the Niners are actually going to be meeting with Kalen Barnes from Baylor. So I think that's actually a really solid fit right there. And it just gives us that depth at cornerback. Look, I know we brought back Dante Johnson. But I just think maybe some youth, some you know, v- you know, vitality, just some, you know, playmaking ability could really be used in the secondary that's like my one concern that we've had with uh, D'Amico Ryans is that the, the the edge players the the edge players were really getting after it, but the cornerbacks and the secondary just not making enough plays so there are plays to be made now similar to the last mock draft in the seventh round here or sorry it's still the sixth round Sixth round compensatory pick, Tyquan Thornton. Now I heard someone say, well, he's just a track guy. And I'm like, well, this is the end of the sixth round. And Tyquan Thornton could potentially be another Marquise Goodwin. Now look, he's 6'2". He's got great size. Is he the most physical, aggressive guy? No. But if he was, he wouldn't be here in the sixth round. So I think he could be someone that we develop long term to be a just a really solid wide receiver, give us excellent depth at the position, uh, and just give us that, you know, uh, that aspect, and it just gives us that aspect of the offense that we don't have. We don't have that legit speed like a Tyquan Thornton has. Now, we actually pick right after it again with our next compensatory pick, and this could go in a lot of different ways here. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's really a bummer because this is such a great edge class and I actually haven't drafted an edge player yet. But I just, I think that we're pretty solid there. I mean, you think about it, Nick Bosa, Samson Ebukam, we have Jordan Willis we brought back. We have Charles Amenahu who we traded for. We brought back Kerry Hyder. So that's five edge players who can really get after it and who I think with more coaching from Chris Kasorik, the defensive line coach, who's phenomenal, by the way. I think these guys could really be a very solid, you know, rotation at edge play. You know, and there are still some veterans out there who, if we feel like we need to bring in someone else, we could always bring them back. So 
at this point, I'm actually feeling pretty good about our edge situation. So let's take a look here and see who are some of the players available who would just be like a best player available. Now, Leon O'Neill Jr. is really solid from Texas A&M. I'm surprised he's still available at the end of the sixth. Charleston Rambo is actually a really solid wide receiver for Miami. It's funny because I feel like I've read the description on Rambo and it says, where does it say? Found uh, consistent need to be taken, blah, blah, blah. Um, where did it, it mentioned before that he, yeah, he's not a natural, look at this, he's not a natural hands catcher. I actually saw him make a bunch of great catches with his hands in Miami, so I don't necessarily agree with this. Um, but let's see who else here might be available. Mari Barno from Virginia Tech. Now, this could be someone who at this point is a really solid prospect at the end of the sixth. You know, he's got great size. He fits that speed rusher guy. Um, Michael Clemens from Texas A&M as well. But, you know, it's one of those things where there's a lot of other guys available here still. So there's so many different options and directions that we could go in. I kind of have a few guys who are draft crushes. And to me, Tyler Vrabel is one of those guys. Look, he comes from NFL pedigree, which his dad and Mike Vrabel, you know, multiple pro bowler, um, Super Bowl winner with the Patriots, coach of the Tennessee Titans. So Tyler is going to know what it takes to succeed in the NFL, the level of commitment, the level of work to put into it. But overall... I look at Tyler Vrabel, and he could be someone that we develop behind him. Mike McGlinchey at right tackle. Look, McGlinchey's on his last year of his contract. He's coming back from an injury. If McGlinchey plays fantastic, either we look to extend him or else he maybe goes somewhere else, gets a huge contract, and we get a third-round compensatory pick. If he doesn't play well, then maybe we have his uh, you know, potential replacement of the future in Tyler Vrabel. We also have Jalen Moore, who Shanahan is very fond of. But overall, I look at this draft class, and it's an interesting one because although there's a lot of different ways the 49ers can go in, because, look, we have a very solid roster. We don't have a lot of holes to fill. But I think in this situation, we've done really well. Just to sum up real quick, Trey McBride, he's going to be a perfect running mate to George Kittle. Trey McBride could end up being the best tight end in this draft class. And with so much focus being put on Kittle and Debo and Ayuk and Elijah Mitchell, you know, and Rashad White, Trey McBride could be one of those guys who just doesn't get really looked at that often by opposing defenses and make some big plays. At the end of the day, too, look, I love George Kittle and I would never consider trading him. But George Kittle misses time. We love how George Kittle plays. He gets yards after the catch. He's very physical, but he misses games. You almost have to bank on him maybe missing two, three, four games a year. And then we have Trey McBride here now who could be the number one tight end in George Kittle's absence when he almost assuredly will miss some game time. Cole Strange, depth on the interior offensive line. We're hoping that Aaron Banks can start right away um, coming into this coming season. Maybe Brunskill plays right guard, Banks left guard. Cole Strange could be the ultimate successor to Alex Mack at center, or maybe he could be the long-term solution at right guard or left guard. We'll see how it goes. Martin Emerson, perfect scheme fit for the 49ers in the defense that we play. Rashad White, just looks like Emerson, but on the offensive side of the ball, perfect scheme fit could end up being just a fantastic bell cow at running back Verone mckinley i know some of you guys aren't a big fan of him just because he's maybe not the complete package at safety but in the fifth round you know he's someone who is a ball hawk you know he will you know he'll take gambles but if we can get him in the system, get him learning from guys like Jimmy Ward, Jaquaski Tart, Tarvarius Moore, Hufanga, and the like, George Odom now, maybe he could you know, take those more calculated gambles, which could lead to big plays. Kalen Barnes, potential through the roof, speedster guy, return potential. Tyquan Thornton, same thing. It's one of those things where at the wide receiver position, we have a lot of very good players but do we have that elite top-end speed that can take the top off the defense? We don't. Tyquan Thornton, you just send him on a go route and it clears everything up underneath for Debo, for Ayuk, for Jawan, for Kittle, for McBride. 
and then we go Tyler Vrabel, who could ultimately be the successor to Mike McGlinchey at right tackle. So overall, I think this is a really solid draft. Now, look, we all have our preferences, and I clearly have guys who I like to target. I mean, Martin Emerson, I like Tyquan Thornton, I like Tyler Vrabel. So I think these are guys, Verone McKinley is another guy that who I like. Um, and we're all going to have our preferences, and that's really the beauty of of the draft. You know, we could all, you know, we see guys, we like certain traits about certain guys, we can envision them with the team that we like. But um, I think this is a really solid draft for the Niners. And who knows what could happen? Maybe we move up in the draft, maybe we move down. Um, the one, th- a couple of things that I'm missing here is, well, just really an edge player. I mean, this is class is so deep at edge rusher. And the fact that I didn't come away with one in this draft here, mock draft, would be a little disappointing. But at the end of the day, like I'd mentioned earlier, we do have five, maybe potentially six guys who could be very solid as part of a rotation at edge. And the way the draft worked out, you know, again, I don't like forcing picks. Plus, there are veteran options out there, you know, at the edge position who we could always bring in should uh, the draft not work, fall our way. And then we trade Jimmy Garoppolo or we cut Jimmy Garoppolo, then we have money to maybe bring in a uh, veteran uh, free agent at the edge position. So really happy with this draft. And I'm going to leave it right there, guys. It's Mock Draft Monday. Next Monday, I will be having another Mock Draft. And uh, leave your comments. Let me know what you think of my picks. Let me know who you guys would like to pick in your Mock Drafts. And uh, at this point, guys, I'm going to say two things, and you know what they are. The butt counts, and I'm going to catch y'all on the flip side.